Thank you guys. Uh, it really is great to be here. Uh, first of all, Fanny Packs are back in. If you have not heard, I know they went out of style, but uh, they are back. So make sure to hit our uh, our, uh, our product folks and get one of those to take home so you can proudly display it around the office. Um, so I want to welcome uh, two people that have a tremendous amount of experience when it comes to uh, data governance um, and policy. Uh, First one I'm going to introduce is Mike. He is from uh, Fulton County, Georgia. Um, and he is going to come up here. He's going to talk to us a lot about uh, uh, open data and kind of how they've matured their governance program around that. And the reason I introduced him first is because I have the, uh, the uh, pleasure of introducing my former boss because I was really on the hook for a speaker. And I figured he kind of me. <laughs> Uh, ben Birch from uh, uh, Prince George's County. Um, I am actually a, a former uh, Gubby and uh, just uh, transitioned over to uh, Socrata about uh, about nine months ago. Um, there's still many days I wake up in NBU. Um, I really do miss it. Uh, but the beauty of it is I still get to work in the space um, and really help you guys further your mission, which is delivering great services. Uh, to your constituents, i.e. the public. So um, we're going to jump into this. Um, uh, one quick thing. Yes. Prince George's County, Maryland. Yes. Prince George's Left County, Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take a seat here because I've been standing all day. Um, so, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about today is, and, and really the, the main jux of this is data, data governance. Um, and as you guys kind of are in the thick of it or are starting down the road of whether it be open data or um, as I'm sure you're getting the flavor of, of uh, SCGC and, and internal data and really how to manage that is really kind of the rules that need to be on the road as you, you start your journey here. Um, so there are a couple uh, things that uh, we want to cover um, and there are a couple things that I just want to kind of highlight that will kick off some of the conversation that we have here today. Um, you know, one of the things you're, you're going to have to do when you're, you're developing your program really is obviously you're going to have to have some buy-in, um, whether it's an executive buy-in to kind of get your program started, um, but uh, really buy-in from the partners that you have within your organization. For, to get them to actually help you out, supply you with data, um, and guide you, to give, give you the content that's going to make your, uh, your, uh, your, your program successful. The next is really uh, your kind of governance structure, how you want to want to operate, whether you kind of want to have a centralized uh, board that, that kind of runs things, or whether it's decentralized, and your departments are kind of the, the masters of their, their data and kind of ship out what they want you to see, or whether you come up with a hybrid system. Um, and uh, you know, I, you're going to hear some, some, different, uh, some different variables on that today. Um, and then the, there, you know, I'm sure you've heard data inventory, but really how you go about creating your inventory, um, and then really how you prioritize getting access to that data and getting it available to the people that need it. Um, and then really uh, your, uh, your privacy issues that you're gonna run into. Um, you have HIPAA out there, you have public safety data, you have health and human service data, child protection data, all that stuff that you know, has to be treated with uh, a lot of care and you need to really limit access to, but can be of so much valuable to other people in the organization or even the general public. Um, and then some enforcement standards and, and how you're making sure people follow the rules um, and then obviously, you know, whether you're going to start piping this out via social media um, and then as well uh, engaging the community on how to use the data um, and what they can get access to and all that. So that's some of the stuff we're going to be discussing today. Um, so I did want to kind of start with uh, uh, the external experience. Um, you know, Mike, you're kind of on the ground floor and have built a, a pretty substantial program there in Georgia. Would love to get some of your insight on kind of how you got that, that those official kind of uh, footholds um, with your departments and got them to say, you know what, we're going to open our door to you. Okay. Uh, so, again, my name's Mike Rowley from Fulton County, uh, Georgia, Atlanta area. Uh, I am the assistant uh, to the Chief Strategy Officer for, for Fulton County. Um, open data 
uh, is actually a very fun and unique experience for everybody, I think, as we go through this and how you develop what it is that you are going to be looking at, trying to do. Everybody's jurisdiction, I think, is a little different in how they want to operate. Uh, and you're going to have to kind of define this as to uh, what works best for your jurisdiction. We may give you some ideas that maybe you may want to look at. You may find something else that works. So don't be afraid to try anything. Uh, push the envelope a little bit from our end. Our boss is Anna Roach. Uh, she's a chief strategy officer, and she is very forward-thinking, very open, transparent, you know, pushing those that envelope to make everything open to the public as much as possible. Uh, we actually develop our programs uh, with, uh, we're using a uh, committee, uh, kind of like a centralized committee, but that committee really is uh, about 20 members uh, for the most part. We have the purchasing department, finance department, uh, legal, IT, strategy, executive management, chief operating officer, chief financial officer, budget director, all these people are part of the group that is actually working with us as a team. That team is going to be the one that's deciding what data gets published uh, and what data is prioritized to be first uh, in terms of development. It has taken us a little bit of time to actually get people to understand uh, what open data is. And I think one of the big things you have to kind of work with is get everybody to discuss what is open government, what is open transparency, and make sure everybody has the same understanding. Uh, when we got into the room and started having people talk about it, they kind of had different perspectives on what level it should be at. IT was, our IT department has been very reluctant to put data out there. Legal department was very reluctant to put data out there. Finance department, which was a surprise to us, was very open to putting data out there. They wanted everything out there to, to put it out there for transparency. Our purchasing department wanted everything out there. So it was, you know, uh, we ended up actually talking about it. Everybody got to see a draft of a policy, which we actually did, that kind of defines exactly how we go through the process of putting data out there, how it is reviewed, uh, what type of data, how we're going to prioritize that in terms of a list. Uh, when it comes to prioritization, uh, we actually came up with uh, about, I don't know if I'd say about 50 data sets to start with uh, that we said, we think that we can easily get this data. Let's kind of now, go, what is the first 10 that you guys want to do? With that, that we kind of work through the process to say, okay, let's open up this data and uh, make it available to the public. Uh, one of the big factors that has helped us, you said executive management buy-in, we have a county manager who is forward-thinking. He was a vice president of Bell South, kind of has a different, not the normal government stance on how we actually operate. So it's given us a fresh look. As to that, and he said, whatever this team needs to make it public, make it happen. So that direction helped guide us through that. Uh, and give everybody else a direction that, you know, he's supporting this, this is uh, his vision, this is what he wants to see, and this is how we're going to go forward with it. Uh, communication plan. Uh, communication plan is key as to how you actually work with everybody. Uh, understanding, and it's getting down to the staff level from not just the directors, not just the supervisors, but that day-to-day -day staff to actually teach them what they can use these open data platforms for in developing their own reports, uh, seeing what value it gives to them in their job, making their job easier. Uh, I've got, actually gone out to several trainings with the staff and they go, oh, we can do that. We can collect that data from this site and I don't have to wait three weeks to get that from somebody else in another department to put it out there. And they're like, okay, I like that, I buy into it. So again, top down, bottom up approach as to uh, getting to the staff and making sure that it is pr uh, productive. Um, uh, community engagement, on that level, we really uh, try and push community engagement. We bring groups into our office on a regular basis, uh, different community groups, leadership groups throughout uh, the county, and we start to show them the data that's available out there, not just through open data, but performance, all those items, digging into the data, show, and they're like, you guys have all this stuff? I never knew I could dig into the crime data and see exactly what's happening in my neighborhood, what types of crimes, when those crimes occurred. Uh, and we kind of had to talk earlier about this, is like, some people will put that level of data out there, but we're like, okay, this is the crime where it happened, here's the exact address where it happened, date and time, all those things are out there. And we've actually gotten great response from it as to, 
this is the type of thing that our public wants to see. So that's why we're pushing that very transparent, very open, and as much data as possible can go out there. So Mike, I, I, what are some of the pitfalls you might kind of want to uh, warn people about as they're, they're starting this process um, that they, they might want to be wary about, especially as they, uh, they start bringing in other partners from their government? Um, and you know, What is it that they're not going to see coming? <laughs> because if you guys have started this process, you know it's coming. Everybody says, I'm not sharing my data, it's mine. You ever see that kind of Finding Nemo? You got those seagulls out there say, mine, mine. They don't want to release it. <laughs> okay? They, they just kind of want to, it's mine, don't show anybody about it. This is, it, and you have to listen to what it is. They'll use any excuse or ask you any question as to try and prevent it. But what we found out is by listening to what the people are asking, really all they're saying is, do I lose control of my data? Do I lose control of the message that I want to be put out there? And you have to find a method or a way to actually communicate to everybody, and everybody's gonna be different as to how they react to it. Um, you know, we get into some of our human services departments, and they're like, nope, you can't have that. It's all HIPAA regulated. Like, we don't want the HIPAA data. We want just general information about services, numbers, levels, those kind of things. Um, so you have to communicate with them well, make sure that they understand that they still control the data. The way that we're actually going to work with it is uh, our policy is that it actually will have to be approved by the department director before we'll actually go out and publish it. Uh, but the review committee will actually, the data policy committee will actually approve it, submit it to the director, say we think it's good enough. They have to approve it first, and then they'll come back to us before we publish it. So therefore, they still do have control of what message will be out there. We'll work with them on any perspectives pages, any type of stories that they want to tell about the data, and make sure that they get to control that content uh, that's available out there. Again, reassuring them, they still control it. Um, other thing is the data is not going to be secure on the cloud. Um, we have run into that. <laughs> it's like, okay, is it secure on our own network? I mean, we had jurisdictions that get hacked, hacked and their information is happened with the city of Atlanta. They were down for several days, <laughs> weeks that, uh, that it actually came to. And we actually had to work through our IT and our legal department. Our legal department actually took a stance on this that they wanted no data up in the cloud. They thought because there were no legal suits that set precedents on if data got breached in the cloud, who was responsible for it. So they, they wanted some case law to be out there first instead of pushing it and saying, we'll, we'll be the first to see if it goes through. Um, they had to understand that the cloud is actually, they don't have direct access to our data in that uh, system where if we're on our own network and somebody gets into that network, they can get to the data and maneuver that. Putting it out there on the Socrata on the cloud actually makes it more secure so somebody's not getting into our systems directly. Uh, and they kind of went through that growth period. They understood it once we brought the Socrata team in, uh, sat down with them, explained those issues to them, and they started to go, okay, we breathe and we can allow it. Um, IT department, um, They were the challenge. <laughs> I think it was more of an ownership as to who owns the data. Is it really, is it our department as Office of Strategy and Performance Management or is it IT that really manages the data from a day-to-day -day basis? So we kind of had to work through that growth period with them. Uh, again, bring them in, understand we're not trying to take over what it is that you guys want to do. We want to work with you. You guys control certain data sets. You guys can give us the information, make our job easier, but let us uh, follow the policy that's been set by the administration. Thanks, Mike. So, Ben, you've, Prince George's County, in the open data field, but has really, over the past several years, moved to managing data internally. Um, and what are, how are you guys dealing with kind of moving it across uh, the government, making it available and usable? Um, how are you guys doing? Well, the, the evolution of, of our, our data um, really begins when we started making a better connection between performance data and the budget and being able to justify expenditures uh, down to the employee level 
agencies asking for new staff, asking for new resources, um, new technology, and being able to connect that to the budget. And really what that did was provide the agencies, sort of gave them insight on how to explain their data. Um, you know, again, for in Prince George's County, a lot of, of what we're doing data-wise, it starts with agency data. That's, that's our primary focus. Um, so as data became, and performance data became more a part of the budget process, it opened up uh, more of a demand, not only from leadership, but even from the agencies, about the data, about how to use the data, uh, asking questions and really challenging us about whether data exists to explain this or that. Um, one development that's happened just in the past couple of months, which has been, for me, one of the real innovations that I've seen internally, is I have, in our Department of Public Works, a handful of people who use the open data portal as a case management system. Because they go in there, our, our open data portal has a, a huge data set of all of our, all of our 311 requests, about 90,000 a month. Um, the public, work team, public works team goes in there and they sort it by their department, which they can easily do, and that's how they know where the, the, the service requests are coming from the public are. So as they started to see the connection between resources and data, and then starting to see the connection with the public demand side and data and resources, it's really expanded how we use it internally. Um, but really, it all comes back to the budget. Um, if they're getting better and better at using data to justify what they have, what they need, um, and they understand why they're not getting some things, because we make it very clear that this is, this is how you justify things. And um, it's really made our agencies more uh, data savvy. Um, it's made them understand where to find their own data. It's helped in our, our, our budget planning as we're able to track things like overtime spending, uh, but also just on other general internal service resources. So how do you deal with some of the demands for siloed data in, in one department and getting access to it in, in others so that they can really kind of utilize it to drive decision making? Yeah, a, a lot of that comes from just demystifying the data. Uh, a lot of agencies, a lot of people within agencies are still a little leery about letting data out. Um, and really the, the best way to get them to sort of loosen up on their use of it is explaining how they can use it to their benefit. When we do our performance management, our performance analysis of each agency, we let them tell the story. I mean, we help them figure out which, which individual data sets will help explain that story, but we let, we let them prioritize their story. We let them write the text, the narrative that goes along with all that data. And as they start to see those connections, We've seen a lot of those barriers um, being eliminated. We're seeing a couple of agencies that have come to us and actually requested that not only is their data, uh, should it be used more by us internally, but we've had a couple of requests to put things on the open data portal, uh, which is a bit shocking to, to be quite honest with you. Um, but, but, you know, it, it really comes back to helping them understand how to use it to their benefit. Um, that, A, they're not, they're not going to win ever by keeping it to themselves and just trying to talk their way uh, to success. Uh, but B, also explaining, because you know, like, like you know, everyone in this room, being around uh, the whole open data, open government uh, circles that we are, um, I can say confidently we've never seen an administration brought down because of something found on an open data portal. Um, criticism, yes, but 
not real scandal. So again, it goes back to demystifying and trying to explain to them, really what you're hanging on to is not that big a deal. So I do have one last question. I, I, I hope uh, both of you will, will uh, give a little insight into it. And I'm gonna throw out, um, as a former GovU, one of the worst term, worst acronyms out there, uh, MOU. Um, talk to me about how you kind of, you know, everyone loves to come up with an MOU to share something. Tell me about your experience in those and, and how you kind of deal with it on the open side and also the internal side. So from the uh, open side, uh, actually we are uh, kind of creating partnerships. Our overall vision and goal is to actually open up the system, collect the data for all of the cities that are actually in our county. We have 15 cities all together. Uh, so we've actually said, okay, cities, this is kind of the system that we have out here. If you want to share your data with us and kind of uh, work with us, we'll kind of publish this out there, give you access to a certain goal pages where you can kind of put your data out there, make it available, we'll develop some prospectus pages for you, and so you can display your data out there. This is what you do with your city. Uh, we're actually working through a couple MOUs currently, or we call them intergovernmental uh, agreements for us, but it is an MOU, um, and uh, going through that. It can be a long and tedious process to go through all the layers of government to say, okay, legal side from our side, legal side from their side, okay, politicians from their side, you know, we've got, when we go back in June, some of our staff will go down to do a presentation to their city council to get approval. Um, if there's any way to get out of MOUs, I think go for it, get out of them. I think they, you know, slow down the process a lot. Um, I'm hoping that maybe with some other things, that Socrata can work with us uh, as we look to prioritize things, how we can actually cross um, some of the things that other jurisdictions are doing to make it easier for the collection of data and some of the things that we're looking at. Uh, but MOUs are yeah, long and tedious. I know you guys have probably gone through a lot of them uh, and negotiating those and those are the things that kind of bureaucracy that gets us kind of stuck uh, where we need to go. But if you push through it, I think, you know, you can't make them successful, but if there's any way to get out of them and don't have to do them, do, do, it, do it that way. <laughs> On the internal side, uh, the uh, moral equivalent to an MOU uh, in Prince George's government is is an administrative procedure. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so three years ago, um, Alex and I were working on a project. We developed a, a data policy for the county. And I basically pulled together uh, just some best practices. I, I went and found some data policies online. It wasn't that hard. Um, New York City, um, I want to say uh, the state of Oregon, I believe. Um, University of Minnesota had these great policies right there online um, that I, I basically cherry picked from. Uh, we thought it was a pretty good document we put together <laughs> um, and turned it into the CAO on time and under budget and, of course, under budget being zero. But, <laughs> and it's still sitting there. Really, there's two main reasons it's still sitting there. One is the still lurking, ill-defined, undefined thing in the back of some administrators' heads that data is IT. So why am I reading something that county stat's sending me that, that the IT office should be getting me? And the second is we haven't had any data management emergencies. So why are we, why are we why are we setting up a solution in search of a problem, was the approach. The truth is we really were having some data management emergencies. We were having people um, put things on our open data portal without permission, releasing data to the county council without permission, um, getting data from resources, or sources I should say, that weren't reliable, that we can't validate, things like that. So, we just tried to provide a, a, a simple framework through which an agency would have to have their, basically their data methodology. Where did you get the data from? Who provided it? Give us an email, a, a link, whatever. Nothing complicated. Just so we know that it's legitimate. What the data actually says is kind of, I'm kind of agnostic on that. 
I just want to make sure it's coming from a reliable source and not some you know, garbage, mark garbage marketing firm like we had to deal with two weeks ago. Of, that was just, it was, I wouldn't go in, it was horrible. Um, and it took us, took me and my team, uh, I don't know, a couple hours to fix it. But, uh, so again, internally it's sometimes, it, it's that, that battle, non-battle with IT, that's, they, they don't want to address it with us. And, and also it's the, the sense of urgency. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of inventing emergencies, but um, like when an emergency happens, I wish it would be appreciated. <laughs> so we've got a mic here in the audience. Um, uh, would love to open up the floor and uh, you know, please hammer these guys with questions. They've, uh, they've got some great answers, I'm sure. Good afternoon. Uh, Tom Mullen from Riverside County. Do you handle your spatial data and non-spatial data uh, within your policies, or do you handle them separately uh, given the, the GIS teams that exist? I'll go for it. Uh, we actually handle it together. Uh, actually, the person that is our data uh, uh, person, Steve Williams, who was going to be here today, but he couldn't make it, uh, actually was the GIS manager. So we see it all as one. I mean, because we're connecting anything that we can't do, we can go onto our site with like our criminal data, our database that's out there. It has the geolocations tied to it. It has, so people can, it makes it more useful overall in terms of our perspective. So if we can tie it and then do some analytics based on that data and see where it's all connected, I think it actually makes a more powerful tool for everybody. Our approach is very split on, on the spatial side. Um, we have, uh, a fantastic person in the IT office, uh, a equally fantastic person who basically runs the 911 center, runs the, um, the whole public safety communication system. Um, they work together very well uh, setting our, uh, our standards on, on the spatial side. Um, and then on non-spatial, they stay out of it. And it's great. <laughs> and it's, you know, they know their roles. Uh, but, but on the spatial side, we, we would literally be lost without them. The two of them working together. The, the one side sets the center line, the, the other side helps with all of the, uh, the analytics and the training and all that, and it, we're very fortunate to have both of them. Uh, quickly on that question, and this is something that happened as a result of uh, doing, looking at the data, was actually setting a policy for the collection of geospatial data with everything that the county does. Um, that happened in Prince George's about, uh, about six years ago after realizing there was so much going on that we had no idea where it was occurring. Yeah, um, and, and we were very fortunate that because, because that, and I'm not even sure if it was a written policy or not, already existed on the public safety communication side and the 311 system that we adopted is basically Create is, is a product of the same company that does the public safety communications. It was very easy to just expand that policy for both emergency and non-emergency cases on uh, making everything have an address attached to it. Hi, hi I'm Stefan Ray, I work for the city of Austin. And uh, we have a sprint going on right now with uh, people from our uh, open data liaisons and people that work at CTM focused on open data governance and we're, we're trying to establish an open data governance um, policy and group and they're still in a, in a sort of a fact-finding phase. One of the things that we've thought about is a question whether it makes sense to include non-governmental individuals, people from the community to be a part of uh, a group that would advise or help to set direction for the city's open data governance. And I'm just curious if you if you've done that or thought about it or have any ideas on on involving non-government. I have thought about it strongly. Um, I pushed the idea of an open data uh, uh, governing group um, that I am reviving that idea after it was projected a few years ago, um, because I had a, I, something came up that I think it would, could have been addressed with that initially. And the answer is absolutely, should have public members. 
the user community. Um, I already have somebody identified who's going to I want on there working. Um, I got the idea from our neighboring county, Montgomery County. Uh, they have one. Um, I've sat in on one of their meetings. They work really well. And basically, the users are bringing issues and questions to the table about what they want to see in their data sets. What's useful? Um, we lost focus because we were looking at, uh, we, were, we were kind of obsessed with um, uh, customer service requests. What does the person complaining about something want to know? And we addressed only that. We weren't thinking of like the business community, the nonprofits who could benefit from the data on the open data portal. And we, we missed out by not having fields available on data we're already collecting. And, and I agree, I mean, that's one of the things, we have thought about it in terms of citizens' input and try and bringing them to committee. It's not something that we've done as of yet, but one of the things that we are, have done is actually make it so that if a citizen wants to see specific data, uh, make the request to us through the website so that way they can say, hey, this is something that we need to prioritize as we go forward. We don't want to publish data out there or focus our time and efforts on something that isn't what we think might be useful to the public, but then they say, we don't, we're not interested in that. Hey, we want to see this. And we're trying to actually look at different things in terms of integration with uh, the website hits that we get. Uh, in terms of our website development and saying, okay, what data are people looking at? This is the information that's most important uh, that they're looking for. Let's uh, prioritize that uh, through our list as we collect that information. So I think it is, it's a very, very great idea to keep the citizen involvement in there. Again, it promotes the usage and promotes uh, what your programs are doing, what the benefit is to the community. So I think we've got time for one last question. I'm Melissa Bridges from the city of Little Rock. Um, kind of piggybacking off of that citizen participation in it, because um, our data governance committee does have that citizen component. How do you guys use either your citizen engagement around the information that you have or through your institutionalized PR or social media or whatever you've got in your entity to get the story out there? But one of the things that I fight with is I'm continuously pushing out content on the social media channels that I have control over to push the content and tagging the local media in it and trying to work with our PR guy. But it's like every once in a while they'll come grab it, but they're more interested in the homicide that just happened and it's like who gives a rat's patootie if you can go find all this other stuff. Um, so how are you guys trying to tackle that issue? How are you making it sexy? Oh, uh, I'll, I'll handle this one. We're not. <laughs> okay. I mean, we, we, it's the, 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 the PR around our open data has been kind of disastrous. And the shame of it is you can go in there and you can see how many views we've had on all these data sets. And it's really, it, it, really pretty good. And it's like, good Lord, just think what we could have done with this if we had put even a little bit of effort to it. We don't talk about it on social media. Now we have, an, we have a, a, a side project that's open, which is our Transforming Neighborhoods Initiative, which is community-based. All the data is community-based, all the information is community-based, and that one's more uh, aggressively pushed out. But, but countywide, we've, we've ignored it. So from our perspective, actually what we've started to do is our first year we really didn't push it out a lot because we want to make sure everything worked, everything was out there. Now that we've got more established uh, systems in place, those types of things, uh, we're working with our external affairs department to actually do communications. We actually did a uh, report yesterday to our board of county commissioners. Uh, at that same point in time, uh, media blitz went out through Twitter, Facebook, all those kind of things. Here's a teaser on something that's out there in terms of open data. Hey, kind of get somebody interested. Maybe they'll click on the site and see what information is out there. Uh, all the media news releases, we push it out there. Uh, they have a uh, countywide newsletter. All that information, we push it out to all of our employees. So every single employee will get a newsletter that says, here's the report for this uh, priority area, here's the information, here's the link to the data, those types of items, um, and go through that uh, system. Um, so it, it's, sometimes it's hard. The other thing that we've actually are working on is a hackathon uh, with the universities to kind of bring them in 
hey, expose those students to this data that's out there, see how they can use it, be creative with it, and give us uh, ideas on things that we never thought would and be they, available. And they do it at the University of Maryland without us. And it kills me. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys very much. And, and uh, Mike and Ben, we really appreciate your insight into this area. Um, and uh, please uh, pepper them with questions as you see them milling about. They've got some great insights in this area and we'll be happy to discuss. Um, if you guys could take a couple minutes uh, when you're done with the session and give us a little feedback on the app, that would be wonderful. Um, we want to make sure that uh, for future connects we're giving you content that you really enjoy. So we can just give these two a, a round of applause. For